Welcome to Karma's a Stitch. Um, this is my little spot on YouTube, and it's where I talk about some of my projects. I'm a knitter and a crocheter. Um, I'm a mom of four, a grandmother to one. And yeah, if you're returning, welcome back. If you're new, I hope you enjoy, and you'll hit the like and subscribe button below. Um, this week I have a lot to talk about. I have lots to share. I have a finished object. I have two finished objects. One is new and one is an older finished object um, that I just, I'm getting ready to give away. So I wanted to make sure I had an opportunity to share it. And I have several whips and some new acquisitions. And um, at the end of the video, I kind of give a little update on the goings on in my household. Um, but I start every video with a scripture and this video scripture is Proverbs 16, three, and I'll put a picture of that up at the end of the video clip. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, I'll start with the old finished object, the finished object that I did. Um, this was a, I had leftover material. It was the first sweater I had ever done and I had leftover material for that. And I will put a, um, the materials that I used in the link below. I don't have a project page on Ravelry for this project because it, it wasn't really a pattern. I looked at multiple patterns and I was like, okay, well I really like, I'll just show it and then we'll talk about it. So it's a little dress that I made for my daughter and she has outgrown it. And so I am giving it to a woman in my knitting group who has a two year old and she's pregnant with another little girl. So I think this dress will get lots of use at her house. Um, but I knew I had lots of leftover when I made my sweater and I wanted to make something kind of matching for my daughter. And so I, I really liked this scalloped edging um, and I really had just finished a sweater so I was familiar with the raglan or more familiar and I kind of incorporated the scalloped edging on each of the sleeves and I wanted some sort of so my five-year-old is um, kind of a picky dresser <laughs> and she doesn't like anything with elastic. She doesn't like anything that's going to kind of hug her body. Um, like the sleeves, if you can feel the seam on the inside of the sleeve where the material is bunched together and sewn, she doesn't want to wear it. Um, so I wanted to find something that made a waistline that wouldn't cause an issue for her. So I kind of, I found a pattern that offered this drop stitch look and I just put a couple rows um, a couple plain knitting rows in between the drop stitches. And as you can see, I had one that was longer than the other. I was just kind of playing with it. Um, I didn't know what, I didn't know what it was going to look like. Um, and then I found a skirt and I really liked the eyelet patterns and how it kind of flared out. Um, pretty sure I have pictures of my daughter in this. It reminded me just the colors. It just kind of reminded me of watermelon. I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> maybe if this was more red and less orange. Um, I want to say this material is part cashmere. I'll have to go back and look for sure, but I will have that information down below. Um, and if I am able to find pictures of my daughter, I'll include those in the video. Um, I finished this last summer. And I'm hoping to give it to a friend of mine in the knitting retreat uh, or in my knitting group who's also going to the retreat that's coming up in August. 
So we'll see if I'm able to get it there. My second finished object is my Multnomah. As you can see, I haven't woven the ends yet. Oop. So it's quite long across. I haven't blocked it yet, which is why I haven't woven the ends. Um, and, if, and I did this on the yarn that Anthony and I dyed. It's got some sparkle in it. Anthony's my son, if you're new here. He's 27, and he does do crafting with me. He will be a part of the podcast when he has finished objects he wants to share. Um, but this Multnomah project was fun. I really enjoyed it. I probably, <clears throat> if I were to do it again, I would probably have this edge up here, which is where I'm doing my increases. I would probably alter it so that I could do an I cord on this side, um, on this edge. And it calls for a US three, which I used, but as, and I wanted to, the, the pattern calls for one skein and I wanted this to be a little larger. So I use, I planned on using two skeins, um, of our serendipity base, um, with this rainbow color. And when I bought the needle for this project, I bought the recommended size, which would have been perfect if I wasn't adding an extra skein of yarn. Um, so when I got to the feather and fan section here, I increased it from a US three to a US four for the feather and fan. Because I had a longer cable on a US-4, I didn't have a longer cable for the US-3. So I did that. And then I, I was like, oh, this is working out great. I'm coming right to the end of the four row repeat for my feather and fan. And I'm coming right to the end of my yarn, doing a little yarn chicken. I would have won. I would have yet won that had I not had to do a bind off. <laughs> so, so I grabbed another one of our serendipity bases that I had, which happened to be in purple. And I did one more, um, you can see a little bit. I did one more um, repeat, four row repeat. And then I did an I cord bind off um, on this. And I think it turned out good. I think it kind of borders the project really nicely. Um, and I'm really excited. This is one I'm giving away as well to a woman in our knitting group. And she'll be at the retreat. Um, I've, I've never met her in person. I'm really excited. Um, when they created, um, they created a Ravelry group for this um, retreat that I'm going to. And with that Ravelry group, um, they created like a, it was on Tuesdays, it was a Tuesday knit along Zoom meeting. And I hadn't, I had done the Klamath, which was the crocheted version of the shawl. And I was picking out my colors for the Multnomah. And I really wasn't sure. I knew I wanted to use something that Anthony and I had dyed because I had done that with the Klamath and I wanted to do that for the Multnomah as well. <clears throat> and so as I was going through the stuff that I had dyed, I pulled out this rainbow color. It happened to be in June, which was Pride Month. And I was like, you know, I've got two skeins of this. I think I could make this work, but I would never wear this. I would, I mean, I would never wear this. This is not something I would wear. I think it's beautiful. It's not something I could pull off. And this woman in my knitting group said, I would totally wear that. And brief conversation, like, are you serious? <laughs> she was serious. And so it brought me a lot of joy knowing that this woman was going to truly appreciate this shawl. Um, I'm going to have it blocked. I'm going to have my ends woven in. And I am going to give it to her at our retreat that's coming up in August. 
So that was pretty exciting for me. I am glad it's finished. I did enjoy it. Like I said, I would change the pattern a little bit to have an I cord on the edge because I did do the I cord bind off on, on the finished edge, but up here, I mean, this is just a little tight, you know, and it doesn't give a lot. And I think it would look amazing with an I cord. So that's, that's the Multnomah. It's finished with the exception of blocking. And that's my, that's my finished objects. Um, I do have, I, I got one finished, one whip finished, but I cast on two more projects and I bought material for a third one and I found material for a fourth one because I know what I'm making my mom for Christmas. I just have to find the pattern or write the pattern, one of the two. So let's get into the whips. I will show you this first one that is being housed in this project bag that my mother made. Yay, mom. Um, absolutely love it. Love this project bag. It's, I mean, I've got five skeins of yarn in here plus the project I'm working on. And if you've watched my previous videos, you'll recognize it because this is one I've spoken about before. And this is the Moherino Medley by Stephen West. I have not touched this in two weeks. So um, this is where I'm at with it. It had, I wasn't too sure about working with the mohair and it's DK mohair. I had no idea that mohair came in different thicknesses. It makes sense once I thought about it, it made sense that it would, but I guess I had just never put much thought into it. This project does have an I cord on each edge. You have an I cord cast on. Um, I really just think it gives a nice finishing touch to your projects. Um, yeah, so this is how far I've gotten with this one. I'm excited to get back to this. I've really enjoyed this pattern. Um, I've got the project up on the Knitting Knit Companion app, which has been super helpful. Um, because I've shown this in previous videos, I'm not gonna go through the yarn, um, but I will have my Ravel Ravelry page um, linked down below. But I mean, this project bag, if you look at that, I mean, I've just got, it just all fits so great in there. And you've got the little pouch here for your notions, which is just super handy. I, I really enjoy these bags and I'm super, super grateful to my mom for making them. <laughs> um, so that would be the Mohair Medley by Stephen West. And that is whip one. Let's see, what else have I already shared with you? Um, I have shared with you, oh, sorry about the critical, um, Anthony's sweater, the one that I had done for him um, in the Cascade 220 yarn. And it's called the Southwood sweater. I will link, link my Ravelry page below. Um, it was a great knit, but the size that I chose, I don't do gauge. I don't think I've ever done a gauge swatch, which is what led me, I'm sure, to knitting an entire sweater and then having to unravel it and <laughs> start over to make a larger size. You would have thought that taught me. You would have thought that with the new size, I would have done a gauge swatch. I did not do a gauge swatch. Um, I have put in some time on this one these last two weeks. Probably not a whole lot since you've seen it. But I am done with the raglan increases and I just have to go from the cast on edge down 10 and a half inches. I think I'm right at about nine inches right now. Um, so I, I mean, I did get some done on this sweater. I'm super excited to continue working on this one. Um, I stopped working on it because I ran to the end of the skein and I needed to attach another one. And I was like, oh, this is a good stopping point for today. <laughs> so I did, I stopped for that day. 
Um, the next project, I don't think, I'm sure that you haven't seen. And it is a pair of socks for my husband. I have knit him two pairs of socks. I knit him a black pair and a gray pair. And I used the sock pattern by um, Kay at the Crazy Sock Lady. It's her vanilla sock pattern. And she's got a lot of great stuff up on YouTube as far as tutorials. And I did, you can watch the tutorials and learn how to do the sock. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, I really wanted, she, that, that's a pretty amazing thing that she's put out there for people. And because she did that, I still went and bought the pattern. I didn't really need the pattern, but I really want to be able to support somebody like that because she's doing a lot to help people. And so I wanted, it's a small way. It wasn't an expensive pattern, but it was a small way to give back to somebody who's giving to folks who want to learn how to do socks. And so I am using um, Kay's Vanilla Sock Pattern. I, I do bounce between the nine inch circulars and the double points. I get bored with both of them. So I, I flip back and forth. Like I'll do it on the nine inch circular for a while. And I'm like, okay, this is boring. <laughs> so then I'll just go to the double points and that kind of brings a little excitement to it for me for a little while. And then I'll go back to the double, uh, the circular. So I, I have knit my husband two pairs of socks. One is black and one is gray. And that's all he wears unless he's going to the gym. He'll wear his absorbing sweat workout socks for that. But for, for work, he only wears the socks I made him. So I started another pair for him. Same pattern um, from vanilla, from um, the vanilla sock pattern from the Crazy Sock Lady. And I'm mixing it up. I put a black border <laughs> with the gray sock, as you can see. He likes shorties. And so um, I've done the heel flap and turn and gusset and I'm working on just straight knitting so I have I have a bit of knitting to do <laughs> um I think for his foot it's 45 rows and I haven't even done 10 yet but I took this to um a recreational park that my husband's nephew was here and spent a week and we took him out to do a bunch of stuff and when we did that we um I took this because it was an easy project to take with me. I also have this held because with this one, I have my little book that holds the sock patterns and the recipes for my husband. So I have the book, but this is also in one of mom's knitting bags. It's got one large zipper pouch. And I believe it has a small pocket on the inside. It does. And then the zipper for any notions or I used it for my cell phone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got that housed in one of mom's bags as well. Um, and the next two are, I think they're both new. Yes. One of them I've, I've talked about before and Sorry, as soon as I talk about my new app, my new purchases, that crinkling will stop, <laughs> I promise. Um, so this one, this next whip, I'm so excited about this. This is the Christmas one that, the, um, sorry. This is the, Christmas present that I'm making for Anthony. And I told him, I said during the last video and that once I finish the Multnomah, that will have given me time to think about the, the colors I wanted to use for Anthony's Christmas present because I want to do an illusion knitting project. And if you have never seen an illusion knitting project, YouTube it, Google it, there's a really amazing, you've got to watch a video of it. Um, but when you look at an illusion knitting project straight on, you just see lines. I mean, it, it's just 
and they're thin, obviously, depending on the size of yarn you use. But it, real thin lines. And as soon as you walk past it, a picture appears. <laughs> and I was like, this is magic. I need to make something. I need to... And you know, I, so I found one that was very, I mean, I think Anthony's just gonna love it, but I needed to think about the contrasting colors I was gonna use because I wanted to dye it myself. So I um, wanted to finish the Multnoma, and once that was done, it gave me enough time to think about the colors I wanted. And so I went out and picked out our Prosperity base, which is an 80-20, and 80-20, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And I dyed up a couple skeins of yarn for Anthony. So the colors that I went with are this dark espresso brown with this orange-ish, I don't know what you would call that. But I thought it was a nice contrast. Um, it wouldn't be too feminine. It would. I didn't want something that was going to have. Um, I don't know. It. I was pretty excited with how it turned out, and Anthony knows I'm making this for him. Um, but look at these colors. So this is what you would see standing in front of this picture. And I don't know if I'll be able to demonstrate it on here or not, but if you, if this is, and then I'm making a wall hanging for him, and I've got this purple on because I did a provisional cast on. Um, so if you're standing in front of it, this is what you see, but as you turn to the side, let's see here, as you turn to the side, it, it starts to, a, a picture starts to pop out. Maybe it'll be better. You see this brown sticking out a little bit more. So that'll be super exciting as that comes along. He does not know the pattern that I've chosen. He just knows that I'm doing an illusion knitting. He's looked at the colors. He watches the podcast. And so I didn't want to have to, I want to be able to share the progress of this. Um, as it gets further along, if you are, if I am able to start seeing kind of what the image is, I may not show the image as we get closer to Christmas, but um, I'm really excited about this. This has been fun. Um, this, the backside even looks, I mean, it's just neat. It, it's just a tidy, fun. This is one of those projects where I'm like, it's two o'clock in the morning. Let me just do one more. Let me just do one more, one more row, one more row. I mean, this has been a lot of fun to work on and I'm just so excited. This is one that I'm sure the Knit Companion offers what I'm looking for. For this particular project though, it is charted. It's a chart that you follow and you're doing like 550 rows or something. And if you look at my work, I have stitch it markers every 10 stitches. And that corresponds with every 10 stitches on the chart. They have it broke down for you. And when you follow that, um, totally lost my train of thought where I was going with that. I, oh, I want to be able to mark off what I've done so I don't lose track. And so what I ended up doing is opening this pattern at, in Adobe so that I can use my, my pen because um, I do it on my tablet and I can use my pen and literally line through what I have finished. There may be a way to do that in the Knit Companion, but I'm so new to the Knit Companion that I haven't I haven't figured out that feature yet. So if you if you use Knit Companion and you know how I can actually mark through lines on the chart, 
to keep track of my progress, I would love to have all of my projects in Knit Companion that I'm currently working on. So if you're familiar, let me know how you use that feature. If, if it has that feature, I can't imagine that it doesn't. I'm just not familiar. Um, and so that would be this project. I will create, um, I do have a Ravelry project page for this project, but I'm not going to link it because I don't want my son to get sneaky and look at his Christmas present. So I'm not going to link that one. Please forgive. <laughs> um, but I will link the designer of the illusion knitting pattern so that you, I mean, he's got, they've got lots, they've got so many beautiful pieces of work and it really is a fun, it's a fun technique to utilize. So that would be whip number four. Really a fun one. I, I Right now, I would have a hard time picking my favorite. Um, but those are my four knitting whips. This final whip that I've got is crochet. It's the only crochet project I'm working on right now. I have a lot of minis and I had a lot of scraps and I've just been accumulating them. And I was like, I wanna make, I, for a while I was like, I wanna do a knitted something with all of these just chaotic colors. But I decided I'm gonna crochet it. So I wound up all of my minis. Um, I wound up all of my leftover scraps from different projects I've done, shawls, sweaters, socks, um, just a lot of different things. I mean, some of this is stuff I dyed that I have just left over. So, I mean, I, I wound them all and it was a process. I, I spread it out across two days because I had to wind all of it by hand. And I'll tell you what, somebody needs to create, invent something as an automatic ball winder for minis <laughs> because that was a process. So what I'm doing is I am doing one square on this blanket. Let's see if I can find. Okay. So that's as far as I've gotten. I just started this one yesterday. And over here, I've got, I'm gonna have a purple one that goes across the width of two, and it'll go up two. Um, you know, and some of them I just did one square each. Some of them I did three. Others I did three, but I spread them out. So, I mean, there's just no rhyme or reason. And like these colors here will appear again in the blanket later because I didn't use up that entire ball of yarn. I still had quite a bit, but I just wanted one square. So I have my bag. Let's see if I can I have my bag of minis all wound up. Ooh. And as I pull one out and I add it to the blanket, I am putting it in here. And these are all of them I've done. So as I, and then once I've gone through all of them in this bag, and I've gradually moved them to this bag, I'll dump this bag back in and start over and just keep adding to the blanket. So that's what I've got for minis. And I mean, it's been, it's been fun. I mean, I just started this yesterday, haven't had a whole lot of time to work on it. And I mean, I look at that. Look at how fun that is. But I'm trying to get ready because I did, I, I will be getting um, a Christmas advent. And I, I want to design a pattern before I get that advent calendar because I want to incorporate um, I want to 
I want to have something that I designed for me to use um, that advent yarn for. So those are my current whips and I'm enjoying every single one of them. Um, I think like for the last one, I, and I have said this, this interaction, this YouTube channel, I created it for a few reasons. First, I just moved to a new state um, right at the beginning of the pandemic. And so I had no way of meeting people. I had left my knitting community back home and had no way of developing a new community circle here. And I was really missing that. Anthony and I were knitting together. He knits, he's the reason I started knitting. Um, and I, I just, I was watching YouTube videos a lot of these people that were just amazing and I could watch their personalities and I could just sit and knit on my projects. I was like, I could totally hang out with that person. Um, and I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> if I had a channel, I could interact with folks and I could kind of get that sense of community back. And I, I really was missing that. Another piece of um, having this channel is holding myself accountable. Last week I said I was going to finish the Smalt Noma before I dyed the yarn for Anthony's Christmas present. And I did. I did finish it before I dyed the yarn. I did finish it before I cast on another project. Um, so now I guess I need to say that for my next video, which is every two weeks, um, I want to have my husband's socks done. Um, I don't want to cast on another project at least until his socks are done. I am only, you saw how far I was and that's just the first sock. So, and you know, the other thing I, I would be curious to know is if you have a favorite sock blocker, um, I would love to know what that is. Cause I've been looking for sock blockers. I haven't found one that I'm like, yes, this is the one I need to get. Um, there's lots of them on Etsy. If, if you have a favorite, I would love to know what that is because I do want to get sock blockers and sizes. I mean, I want to start making socks for my daughter, my husband, clearly different sizes needed. Do they have, do they have kids sock blockers? I'm sure they do. Um, but if you have a favorite, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what it is because I would be excited to see that. Um, I guess, so I want to have the socks done. I really want to make good headway on my mohair medley. Maybe at least another section, possibly more. And I would like to get this, the sleeves um, broke out for Anthony's sweater. I'd like to at least get to where I have the sleeves on the waist yarn and I'm, I'm just knitting the body of his sweater. So that, that's kind of where I would like to get. I'm not at a point where I'm setting goals for this little mini skein blanket. That one might not see some action for a day or two. Um, Anthony's Christmas present, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to have a hard time focusing on anything else because that technique is so fun. Um, but yeah, so... I guess that leaves us with new purchases or new things. Um, I did get a package. This was, remember I told you that our retreat, it's called Yarny Camp. We had that Ravelry group and every weekend we have a no chat thread where we post progress of our um, Multnomah or Klamath or whatever you're doing with with the with the knit along and then at the end of the weekend they do a drawing a, a random drawing and I won 
I won, and this is the mini skein that I got from Inner Yarn Zen. How great is that? I need to, I, I didn't want to wind this one until after I had shared it with the, with you guys. So Inner Yarn Zen is, um, she's a dyer here in Idaho and she's part of our knitting group. Um, she's one of the organizers for the knitting retreat and I was just super excited to, to win <laughs> because as a lot of you know, the yarn that I have from my mohair medley was also yarn that I had won. So anyway, I will be winding this up again. That's from Inner Yarns In. It's a one of a kind. It's on her 80-20 base. So yeah, super excited about that. I will, I will wind that up so that it can make its way into my blankets, my little square blanket. Um, and then there's a new um, yarn store. So where we are currently residing, there was only one yarn store, which was big. I mean, it's, it's not a small yarn store. And when you walk in there, folks are knowledgeable. And there's one particular person in there, when he is working, I always wait for him because he's so friendly and so knowledgeable. And that makes all the difference. It just makes all the difference. When you walk into a yarn store and you kind of get this cold feeling and nobody's really chatting, for me, I just need warmth. I just want to feel comfortable talking with the person. And this particular yarn store that is currently here gave me that with at least a few of the people working there, right? The ones I've come in contact with. I shouldn't make it sound like that. I haven't had many interactions with other employees because I kind of attached to this one person. <laughs> I'm sure everybody else is just as wonderful, but I have solely stuck with him because I've been to other yarn stores, stores where it wasn't such a great feeling. And he, once you have somebody that you know you enjoy interacting with, why would you chance going anywhere else, right? Anyway, maybe that's just how I am. I really like to feel welcome when I walk into a yarn store. And there is a new yarn store that just opened here. And when I walked in, I got that same feeling. And it's called Three Loves. It's in Nampa. And what a great shop. So I went in with my five-year-old, which I, they've been open for um, um, at least a month. And I, I think I'm probably the only person in my knitting group that hadn't made it in there yet because it's summer break and I have my five-year-old and I really want to go and just look. I want to look at everything. I want to look at all the shelves. I want to look at all of the samples. I want to look. And that's difficult to do with a five-year-old. <laughs> but, but I got to a point this week that I was like, I'm, I'm not going to put it off anymore. Um, I, I'm just not going to put it off anymore. I could go on Saturdays, but that's the one day a week that it's my husband, the five-year-old, and myself. It's the one day that it's us. And so, I mean, he wouldn't complain if I went, and he would never try to make me feel guilty. It's kind of an internal, I would feel guilty. <laughs> so, so I choose not to go on Saturdays, and she's closed on Sundays and Mondays. So anyway, I did make it in there this week, and... I got some yarn, but I wasn't going to just get the yarn. I was, I needed, I sat in there and I looked at different, I went to my Ravelry favorites page. Get rid of the crinkle. I went to my Ravelry favorites page. I looked at some projects in there and I wanted to get yarn for a specific project. I didn't want to just grab it to add to my stash. I have a lot of yarn that I've just gotten and added to my stash. I didn't want to do that. So I um, picked a specific project and picked, um, gosh, I don't remember what it was called, but I'll put it on the screen because it's a great project and um, it was a purchased project, uh, totally worth it, I'm sure. And it requires roughly 50 
grams of yarn of, of three different colors. So 150 grams total, which means that with three skeins, because you need three colors, I could potentially make two shawls that look different because I could use the, the colors in different places. I'll put a picture of what the pattern is, um, but I'll show you here. I've got one of the skeins coming apart. Let me put it back together real quick. Um, this here, look at that. This is um, Grape to Meet You. It's 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Look at that. See, I almost got a black color, a solid black to go in this project, but then I saw this and it had the spots of black in it. So anyway, it's the Savannah yarn, 80% superwash merino, 10% nylon. Oh, I mean, yeah. How great is that? I love that. I love the spots of black in there. I'm just so excited. So I've, I got this one. And then I got this one here. It's called Moroccan Nights. 100% superwash merino. Look at that color. I'm so excited. I mean, that is just beautiful. And you know what's funny is I saw this on the shelf and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get that skein of yarn and I'm just gonna build the project around that skein. And that's what I did. I knew I wanted this skein. It's just beautiful. I mean, you can't, I could, I could not just walk by this one. This was one I needed. So I got this one and then I got this one. This is called Dancing Queen, also 100% superwash merino. But you put these together. I just think that's beautiful. I am so excited about this, but I'm not going to cast this on <laughs> until I have finished my husband's socks. I have to finish his socks before I cast this on. Um, and I, and I will create, um, a Ravelry project page. I want to make sure I get this entered into my stash. And the other thing I really want to make sure that I do is, um, Add all of, remember I talked about, oh, it's over there. I'll grab it. One second. My blue bag. My blue bag that holds all of my needles. I mean, it's all just kind of dumped in there. So, yes, <laughs> I want to get all of these also added to my Ravelry page because if you watched my last video, I just found out, I just learned that you can add your tools to your Ravelry page. And I just think that's fantastic. Had I already done that, had I already added my tools when I was buying this yarn, I could have looked at my Ravelry page and looked at the pattern that I purchased through her shop, right? It was in my favorites, but I still needed to purchase it. So I purchased it through her shop. I would have already known if I had the needles, but because I haven't added my tools to my Ravelry page yet, I couldn't look and see, oh, I already have the needles I need. I was kicking myself that I hadn't already done that because I talked about it. I needed to do that. I wanted to have that done and I, I haven't done it yet. But the other thing that I got, um, 
at Three Loves Yarn Store in Nampa. She has right at her register, because I, I had, uh, I have these whips going on and I wanted to have a progress keeper. I think that's what it's called, a progress keeper, where you clip it to where you're at and then when I, I'll leave that there and then at my next video, you'll be able to see how much I've gotten done. So I knew I wanted to get some progress keepers and um, she had at her front counter, a uh, build your own, a uh, build your own progress keeper station. So I don't know if anybody's noticed, but I do like black. I like darker colors. So I created a set, got a little moon or a rainbow and I got a lightning bolt. stop rocking for you. A lightning bolt. And I've got a little gumdrop. And a diamond. Aren't those fun? So I did get a set of six that I can add a heart and a square. So I did get a pack of six and I'm going to add them to these projects that I'm currently working on. So that next time I do a recording, I'll be able to show you guys, this is how far I got. Because I, I intentionally, I knew I wanted to get a Progress Keeper set. And I looked on Etsy and I was like, wow, there's a lot of really cool things. I couldn't make a decision. Did I want wood? Did I want metal? I, I didn't know. I didn't know the options. And so I went to her store and this is what she had. So this is what I got. I was really excited to be able to support the new shop owner. Um, really neat lady. So helpful. And she has that warm, welcoming feeling and that was really nice. So I think that's all that I've got for crafting, knitting, crochet stuff. So yeah, sorry about that. Minor interruption. Um, but like I said, I, I think that's it for all the crafting stuff. And if you don't want to stick around for the personal family stuff, by all means, um, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. However, if you are going to stick around, you will know that I live with my husband and he and I have a five-year-old and we have a three-year-old Rottweiler. Her name is Cinder. And we recently um, had two puppies come live with us and they are out of the same litter. One of them will be my husband's dog and one of them will eventually go live with my son, Anthony. Um, so I guess we'll start with my husband. He's 45. He's an incredibly active, physically competitive man. He has a drive that I've never seen. <laughs> and he recently, he's been having a lot of um, pain in his uh, hip area. He thought maybe he had pulled something. He had a hernia several years ago. He thought maybe he had some scar tissue going on. He, it was not getting any better. And it was getting to a point where putting on his own sock on that side, lifting his leg on that side, um, was really becoming a challenge. It was his least favorite part of his day. Um, he was having to kind of scale back on his workouts, which is a really big struggle for him. And he, so he, he went to a, well, he's been to a chiropractor. He's been to a physical therapist. He's been to an acupuncturist. He had been to a, another something, alternative something. I can't remember even what it was, but he's tried several different avenues to get a little bit of relief in this hip. And finally he made a doctor's appointment and they 
did some scans and x-rays and um yeah my husband at the age of 45 is gonna have to have both of his hips replaced um and that kind of hit him pretty hard and so he is he watches a lot of motivational af athletes that have overcome a lot and i think that's helped him a lot because he's just like this doesn't have to be the end of the world i'm gonna i'm going to recover from this so he does have an appointment with the surgeon in a couple of weeks as a consultation to figure out how long he can wait to do before he has to do the surgery. He definitely has to have the left one done sooner than the right. Um, it may be possible that he just gets them both done and out of the way. So he only has that one recovery period. Um, so these are a couple of questions that he's got for the surgeon. He's really excited to get the answers to those questions. He's already started prehab I didn't even know there was such a thing. Rehab after surgery, I get, but prehab, he's already working on making sure his body is as in pristine condition as it can be going into the surgery. Um, so yes, that is something that we've encountered and we're working through and it's gonna be amazing once we get through the other side. <laughs> um, and these puppies are doing really well. Um, we're working on basic obedience now. The potty training is going well. Definitely better with one than the other. Um, but they're doing really good. They're so, the, the little boy, his name is Mr. He really prefers being with a person. He really prefers being with a person so right now I'm getting a message from my mom and only because I know she watches this I'm gonna say mom you're right it is time and I love you for texting me <laughs> um, she sends me a message at 11 11 and we will if one of us looks at our phone and the time is 11 11 we'll just send the other one a message and it's just kind of a nice reminder knowing hey my mom's thinking about me <laughs> I don't know what it does for her when I do it but um anyway I got your message mom um and she sends me another one really it's still time she's so funny um so anyway these puppies are doing great mister really prefers to be with us. He wants to be with a person. He'll pass up the toys. He'll pass up running outside and chasing the ball. He really loves affection and he'll just follow whoever around, whether it's me or my daughter or Anthony, he'll just follow you around. Um, and that's exactly what we wanted for Anthony. Anthony needs an affectionate dog who just wants to be right there with him. So it's making me feel really good about the selection we've made for Anthony. This puppy is super smart and he really just wants to please whoever he's sitting with. So that's been amazing. It's just felt so good. Um, his sister, Sam, who is my husband's dog, is just so attached to my husband. She's doing so great with him. She is a lot more active than Mr. And she has a lot more sass and mischief in her than Mr. does. Um, but we kind of knew that from the start and it's exactly what my husband needed. And he just... as long as she could go. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, Sam is definitely more energetic and feisty, but we knew that from the beginning and she's exactly what my husband needed. This last Monday, we took a drive out to um, Twin Falls and she just rode the whole way in his lap. And she was just quite content sitting with him. Um, so that brings me to Cinder. Uh, we had a vet appointment with Cinder and I, 
I was there for one thing and the vet ended up touching her stomach and within seconds he said I really think we need to get an x-ray of her stomach um and she has she has something we're not sure what it is it's about eight and a half inches at this point in time some sort of growth he's not sure if it's on her spleen he's not sure if it's on her reproductive organs he said you know if it's on her kidneys the only thing it could be would be a tumor um, it's a little low for it to be on her kidneys so we we are going to have to take her in for surgery um, and they're going to take out whatever offending organ it is um, so yeah that's what's going on with cinder and we're just trying to get geared up for that i am hoping to have that done before my retreat which is taking place on in august mid-august and hopefully she'll be all recovered um i think that's it you can hear the puppy alex just ran in here and woke up the puppies so i think that's my cue i am going to end it for this video and we'll see you guys in a couple weeks see ya